Hi everyone, it's Cyrus here. Welcome to the next episode of the Boxica Podcast. I'm here with Danny. Coach, How's it going, guys? Coach Danny. And I got Danny on the podcast today because um, he, well, first of all, I just wanted to talk about how we know each other. And the, the reason why I got him on is because he's um, experimented a lot and done a, a ton of research into supplements and different things. So I thought it'd be a, a little bit interesting to get him on. You guys can hear about his experience with all these different supplements and things that he's done. Um, His kitchen does look like a pharmacy. So, yeah, we'll dig into it. But first of all, um, let's talk about how we know each other because people probably don't know. How we know each other? Yeah. I think we go back high school days, right? Yeah, you were the year above me in school. So, like, yeah, we probably started hanging around with each other maybe year nine, year ten, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Not too much. Same group. And then uh, we both joined the military. I think we were out. We started going out together in uh, real. Bar bar blue. (laughs) Yeah, that was it. And we were just like dancing around, doing stupid shit. And then we ended up uh, traveling together. Mm. So, Actually, where did we go first? Because my... my, uh Well, when when we were in the military, you were in the Marines, I was in the Royal Engineers. Um, I think we had a trip to Cancun. Oh, yeah, that was it. For like a spring break vacation. We went and we went to Ibiza. <laughs> we did Ibiza. All, all the all the uh, the stuff you do as a young you know, guy in the UK growing up. And and then it was um Thailand, wasn't it? The first like travelling properly. Thailand, yeah. So basically I'd I'd left the army and I was doing uh I was playing cricket in Australia. So when I when I left the army, uh we had a cricket tour. So uh the British Army against Australian Army, uh, New Zealand Army, mm. in like a, a big tournament. And uh, I got asked to go back to play club cricket in Sydney. So I'd gone back for, I think it was like the second half of their summer. And then at the time, you were on a scuba diving uh, instructor course yeah, that in uh, Thailand. Yeah. And obviously, we were like staying in touch the whole time. And then after my Australian trip, I stopped by to Thailand and then ended up joining, on, <laughs> joining you on your uh, scuba diving. So... That's Benches. where, it, yeah, that's where it started, Thailand, and then we went to a little bit of Southeast Asia when we were there, and then we went over to North America. Next, did we do the states? And we went to C- Central America. Or was it Central? No, America? This, so yeah, so basically, when you got your instructor, yeah. the scuba diving instructor, and I was a dive master, we went over to Mexico, right? And you were working in that shop. Got it, got <laughs> it, got it. Yeah, in Cancun. Yeah, you were working in that dive shop. <laughs> and then, uh, and I was finishing off my instructor qualifications in Mexico, which turns right. out I never ended up using anyway. Right. But uh, yeah, I suppose it was a good experience. So basically, after about a month or two of that, we got sick of that, and then just decided to travel Central America. Yeah. Um, went down to Nicaragua. Cost. Uh, we didn't go to Costa Rica, but yeah, Nicaragua. Yeah. And then back up to, I think you found another job. So we had to get back up to Mexico. Let's t- let's tell the story about the bus. So we went to, I remember we went to uh, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, That's the one, yeah. Guatemala. We went to that um, island on Honduras. What's it called? La Ceiba. <laughs> La Ceiba, yeah. <laughs> and then I got a job in Me- back in Mexico. So how it, how it went is uh, me and Danny were out getting drunk. As I, you do. I remember this part. And uh, we woke up in the morning late for our first class bus, as they called it, like a proper coach. Uh, but they told us there was a, a chicken bus that we could get on. They called it a chicken bus. <laughs> and it was basically full of locals. And uh, me and Danny were the last people on the bus, so we got the very back seat, which uh, didn't recline. And we were... How long was that bus tr- journey? Mm, I think it was about two days in total. <laughs> Like <laughs> with, all, with all the border crossings and all that yeah. stuff, because it's from Mexico all the way down to Nicaragua. Yeah, it was f- through like Across five, few, few five countries. different countries. Yeah, and we were just on the. We got flung to the back of this bus with all the luggage. <laughs> <laughs> that we was were just the worst. Cra- we were just crammed into the space for a couple of days. I mean, we stopped off during the way, hung over, um, hung over in the back of a chicken bus, <laughs> full of locals. Um, it wasn't. Ac- yeah, it wasn't exactly a chicken bus, was it? It was just a. Yeah, it was, like, co- it was like an old bus. That, um, yeah. They called it a chicken bus. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we ended up in Mexico two days later, hungover and dying from this journey. That was the worst I can remember. Remember the drivers were playing the loud music? (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> we didn't know. Any, I didn't know any Spanish at the time, so it was. Uh, and then D- Danny went to at some point live in Colombia. Yeah, this is this, that was later on. That was later on, but so it was the best part. And we ended up going back to Thailand, and we spent a lot of time in Phuket. And it was the best part of like four, four and a half years where we were mm-hmm. like all over the place, traveling around. Yeah, it was fun. We went to the states. Um, yeah, Mexico, Central America, Southeast Asia, um, Cambodia, Laos. And we do, we've got a lot of crazy stories, but moving on. Um, and we both ended up in the fitness industry and, um, and ended up in Dubai. So supplements, let's move into that where people can get some good advice from this and not just uh, drunken stories. <laughs> so like, give me like a, a, a quick breakdown. Like someone is, you know, a member's come to Boxica, they're a new member They've started doing the classes and they want to look in, start looking into like supplements to take, like for general health and wellness. What, what would your advice be? Well, I mean, for the average person coming in, um, just for basic fitness, um, especially if they're, they're just starting out um, or they're looking to up their fitness, I think the, the, main, the main thing is food, obviously, first. Get your nutrition down, down point. Um, get that, lay that foundation. Um, that goes with sleep as well, you know, uh, sleep, getting enough sunlight, food. Uh, once you've ticked all those boxes, I think then you can start looking at uh, certain supplements to, as a boost or, um, you know, to help you out. Yeah. But basic ones, I mean, ones that I use a lot always um, is uh, magnesium. Magnesium. Yeah. I'd, right. I'd say magne- for me, magnesium is, is the number one because... Yeah. It's almost like, you know, for example, you might have like a low vitamin D um, levels. Right. That's because you've got your magnesium deficient because you can't, um, your body won't synthesize vitamin D without magnesium. Right. So, yeah, magnesium is like involved in like three, like over 300 like different processes in the body. Right. Um, So, yeah, without that, if you're deficient in that, then, I mean, that could cause a myriad of problems down the line awesome um and uh, you know magnesium helps with sleep uh, muscle recovery yeah um so you take it I in mean, the, the list goes on you, you could spend the whole podcast just talking about magnesium do you uh take magnesium in the night before you sleep yeah yeah i'll do uh if i can get hold of magnesium glycinate it's quite hard to get hold of in dubai but i think it started coming in um magnesium glycinate because i think it absorbs absorbs better than like magnesium oxide or right um because there's so many magnesiums, isn't mm. there? Like when you look, there's like yeah. uh, so glycinate. Mm. I mean, the the the, ma- the the main commercial ones are like magnesium oxide, citrate. Um, but yeah, I think for absorption uh, and sleep, I think magnesium glycinate is probably uh, my preferred. Right. Um, but also like magnesium oil or magnesium chloride. Oil goes on your skin. Yeah. 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 Um, What's chloride? Magnesium chloride. Yeah. How, how, how do well, you get that? You get sodium chloride. You get magnesium chloride. Okay. Ma- magnesium chloride comes in a liquid. I just, you get it from the shop here. You can get it in like a spray. Um, you can use it on tight muscles. Oh, you um, just spray it on your body? Yeah. You can use it on tight muscles. You can, uh, again, it it absorbs through the skin. So obviously right. you're, not, you're, not, you're not drinking it or anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, Shots of magnesium. Because, yeah, I mean, you know, we absorb stuff through our skin, not just, mm. you know, uh, ingesting through our mouth. So, um, yeah, I use magnesium oil. Um, that's well absorbed. And um, if you're taking the tablets, I feel like most people are going to go for the, uh, you know, they're going to end up going to a pharmacy or something and buying uh, magnesium. What, what, how much, um, what's the dose? What's the recommended dose? I think the recommended dose is around 500 milligrams, like RDA terms. 500 milligrams. Yeah. Right. But I think, in my opinion, I think people need more, especially if you're working out, uh, you're sweating a lot, mm. um, you've got stressful jobs because mm. you lose magnesium through stress. Right. Uh, if you're in like a stressful state, your body will use more magnesium. Um, if you eat more like refined carbohydrates, mm. um, or carbohydrates in general. Yeah. You know, too much carbohydrates, your body will use magnesium. Right. Um, not not that carbohydrates are bad by yeah. any means, but what they'll do is it'll speed up the metabolism to use more um, 
magnesium. So, uh, so especially this day and age, I think you know magnesium's a, a, yeah, big, a th- big one. I think stress and carbohydrates, uh, and I don't think people sleep too well. So magnesium. Um, where do you buy your Where do you buy your magnesium from? Do you use iHerb? I've just started using iHerb, iHerb actually. Yeah. I was quite impressed because I think it came within like a week. Yeah, it comes and fast, actually. Yeah. yeah, it comes fast to do I. And it's, yeah, it is cheap and it, they've got a, lot, a massive selection on there. Yeah. Like usually things that you can't find in the pharmacy you can find on iHerb. So, um, magnesium is the first thing. That's great. Uh, I also take magnesium. I'll do 400 milligrams of uh, uh, glycinate 30 minutes before I sleep. Um, but I do need to change the tablets. They're really big and they get stuck in my throat. Um, oh, you take glycinate, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Glycinate, Would, 400. Wh- and you get it from Dubai now? Yeah, I oh. get it uh, from iHerb. All right, cool, yeah. So magnesium, something I should have said in the start of this podcast, me and Danny are not doctors, and uh, any information you're on here is just me and Danny, two personal trainers talking about you know supplements in general. Um, consult your doctor before you start taking any of this stuff. All right, so magnesium is the first one. Well, no, actually, the first one was... Get your food and your sleep sorted. Don't start thinking about spending money on supplements if you haven't got the basics right. So consistent training, three to five days a week. Make sure you sleep in optimally and make sure you, you dive into nutrition a bit before you start spending money on supplements. And then the first one is uh, magnesium. 30 minutes before you sleep. Yeah, 400, 500 milligrams. And glycinate was the preferred um, type of magnesium. I mean, you can't, yeah, you, just a quick one. Like you can take magnesium throughout the day. I mean, oh, you can. Obviously, you, can, you know, we get magnesium through food as well. Mm. Um, but I just prefer to take it majority at night because you know calms the nervous system down, gets you more into like a, a rest, digest type. Uh, yeah. You know, your your body in that mm. in that state, um, which obviously you need to start producing melatonin, start falling to sleep, and things like that. Mm. Um, whereas in the morning, you want more. You know, your cortisol higher mm. you know from you know stuff like that so, so taking it in the morning would be like going against your body's natural kind of yeah, i think if you do too much in the morning yeah yeah um but yeah like, like i said i mean it's hard to get in it's hard to just cram it all in at night you know i mean i i like to do quite a bit because obviously i train quite a bit um i just find it helps with sleep and yeah and you know it helps with testosterone and things like that so yeah um there's just like I said, you can go, you can spend a whole podcast on magnesium. Yeah, but yeah. <clears throat> All right, other other like core supplements that you would <coughs> recommend mm. after, after magnesium. In terms of training or just general health. In, gen- in general, general health or your top kind of supplements that you would recommend. Yeah, I mean supplements. Just just going on to the vitamins, I'd say vitamin E and vitamin C is very important. Right, along with vitamin D. Uh, but obviously, we, you know, we can get vitamin D from, from sunlight. Yeah. Um, and like I said before, without sufficient magnesium in the body, you're not going to synthesize vitamin D anyway. Mm. Um, but yeah, just going on vitamin C, vitamin E, they're the kind of antioxidants of the of the vitamins. Um, like I said before, this day and age, we like, we're living in a world with a lot of oxidative stress. Yeah. You know, a lot of things come out coming out as EMFs, pollutions, mm. uh, poor diet, you know, stressful jobs, poor sleep, all that stuff, mm. um, which can create oxidative stress. Mm. So to counterbalance that, you know, vitamin C, uh, antioxidants. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people listening to this and you yourself have heard of, you know, the d- the balance between antioxidants and oxidative stress yeah. um, or oxidants. Yeah. So yeah, vitamin C, vitamin E. Um, I think they they work in slightly different ways. Mm. Um, but they're very, very important to you know have sufficient levels of those. Mm. Um, in terms of supplements, vitamin C, I think it's it's pretty easy to get from food, especially if, if you like fruit and vegetables. Right. Um, what what would be the I mean, RDA C. on uh, vitamin C? I'm not going off the top of my head. I'm not too sure. What do you but take? Vitamin C, I don't. I mean, I don't take. So you uh, get some, it from some, food. Sometimes I'll take like a whole food of vitamin C. Um, but a lot of the stuff in the pharmacies, I'd probably stay clear off because right. uh, it's um, it's kind of it's not the whole form. Right, it's azorbic acid. So yeah. you, when you look at the back of vitamin C, yeah, it says azorbic acid, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, that's only like part of vitamin C. Ah. Um, 
So I prefer whole foods, or you can get you know whole food uh, sea supplements mm. online as well, mm. uh, like camu camu powder and stuff like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I tend to stay clear of the vitamin C supplements that you get from the pharmacy. Um, uh, more more focus on foods that are rich. Yeah, in because it's C. I mean it's you know like you know you know yourself and people listening vitamin yeah. C's <laughs> it was in grapefruit oranges yeah you know if you lo- if you can eat fruit which most people can, yeah yeah um, yeah it's uh, high amount in uh, peppers as well get. capsicum yeah, exactly but just going on to vitamin E um, I do sometimes take a vitamin E supplement um, only because I think I find it harder to get it in, in from food mm. than I do vitamin C um what foods contain E, do you know? Avocado. Right. Uh, what else? Nuts. Is it in nuts? It's in some nuts, yeah. Um, but yeah, they're obviously higher calorie foods. So Yeah. Um, but I do like to take a vitamin E supplement sometimes, only because it's like, you'll notice uh, it's great for skin. Right. Um, and, you can, and you notice it within like a few days. You start taking a vitamin E supplement, great for skin. Awesome. Um, it's great for heart health, right? Uh, eye health. Again, it's a it's quite a big, it's a big one. Well, and how much do you take? What's the milligrams? At the moment, I'm taking around th- a thousand. A thousand milligrams of yeah. vitamin E. So you can either get that in two capsules, or yeah, or these like gel capsules, or uh, you can just buy. You can get them where it's like a thousand milligram. A thousand milligrams, yeah. yeah. One. And that's that's quite. I mean, that's quite high. I mean, not, I don't think many people would be doing that, but. Right. Um, yeah, it's uh, vitamin E is a good one, um, especially with, it's good for um, clearing out estrogen as well. Right. Um, yeah, the list goes on again with it, vitamin E. Yeah. Um, so we've hit magnesium, vitamin C, which you're recommending mostly from foods, vitamin E. I've never tried to take vitamin E before, but it's definitely something I'll experiment with. I will check out the doses before uh before trying it and uh what about fish oil yeah fish oil i um i don't take too much fish oil i did i mean i remember like crossfit days <laughs> I remember yeah when we were like smashing out crossfit for a couple of years yeah i think fish oil was one of the big um hyped yeah supplements back then um so i was doing quite a lot of fish oil back then but yeah i think i just get most of my omega omega threes well, all my omega is from, from fish. Right. Um, like salmon and different seafoods. So. so do you make sure then that the salmon is uh, like organic? I'm assuming... Yeah, wild caught, like wild caught, I, I try and go for right, it. Yeah. Because uh, obviously, you know, the stuff that's like bread in tanks Fond. is... Uh, you can just imagine all the, yeah. all the crap they're flying around in. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wild caught, definitely. Um, and how many times a week would you eat that to get your omega-3s? Mm-hmm. I probably eat about, I probably eat salmon like maybe two or three times a week. Not right. just salmon, but you know, all all different types of fish. Okay, all different um, types of fish, right? Yeah. Okay. But just just going back to the fish oils quickly, it's like, um, yeah, commercially that they're, they're like one of the biggest sold supplements. Mm. But I think you've just got to be careful of like where it's sourced from because um, the the fat it, it oxidizes in, in, in your body. Mm. So as soon as you ingest fish oils, mm. it can it, they can go rancid, they can go off quite quickly. Mm. Um, because yeah, I mean, that's going in towards like polyunsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fats and saturated fats. Mm. Um, polyunsaturated fats can um, oxidize quite qu- quite quickly in which, your body. Yeah, um, but just just on I don't, I don't want to go too far into that because that's a, yeah. another rabbit hole. But yeah. just, I think just with fish oils. Um, yeah, I think it's got to be from a good source, yeah. quite fresh, because yeah, yeah, I think they can go rancid. Yeah, I used. To, someone told me once before you take a fish oil, before you take a batch of fish oils, break, break one of them and smell, and smell it. And if it mm. smells like you can tell by the smell, but I do know that you what you said was there's a lot of brands out there for fish oils, a lot of really cheap brands. And so with fish oil, the mega freeze, what you're actually looking at is the EPA and DHA value. So if you look on the cheap random brand, 
the EPA and DHA will be like really low and you'll have to take like 25 pills literally to get mm. like a decent amount of EPA and DHA. Yeah. But I do know two brands and you can tell me what you think of these brands or if you've heard of them. Two brands that I've heard of are Thorn. Yeah, Thorn's good. It's supposed to be high Thorn's quality. Good company. Very yeah. good company. Yeah. yeah. So if you are going to go for fish oil, look at Thorn. I've actually just bought um, Thorn fish oil. Um, and the other one I heard recommended was Nordic Naturals. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of those as well. It's quite expensive, right? Especially if you buy it in okay. the Life Pharmacy in Dubai. Are they just they just focused on mainly fish oils, though, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Nordic Nordic Naturals. Nordic I think Nordic. Thorn as a company as a whole. I think, I mean, a lot of the people I kind of look up look up to and listen to and yeah. you know follow, um, Thorn has always had a good name yeah so, yeah I, t- I tend to uh go with thorn as yeah. well yeah yeah no same stuff. yeah I've, I've just bought the fish oils and i've got an electrolyte from them as well um so thorn guys we'll, we'll link up thorn a link to their website um in the in the show notes so you can check it out if you also type in thorn on iherb like we've said you can get a lot of stuff um in dubai from iherb so you can check it out on that um all right so fish oils from food is there any other gent kind of like things that stick out in your mind um, as kind of like starter supplements for people? Yeah, I mean, well, vi- I mean, vitamin D is, uh, you know, is important as well. So vitamin obviously D, it's an, yeah. It's an important, uh, but, you know, I think here in Dubai we're not, we're not short of, of sunlight. So you only really need, I think, maybe even 20, 30 minutes a day um, of direct sunlight, you know, to get enough vitamin D. That's but, quite. I mean, that's but again, that's that's if your di- you know, you, you, your nutrition's on point. Yeah. Your you know your magnesium levels are, are yeah. sufficient. So yeah. Um, so if you're getting enough sun, twenty to thirty minutes a day, you're fine on the vitamin D. Which at the, which at the moment here in Dubai is like impossible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's about fifty degrees. It doesn't have to. Doesn't the sun have to be like a certain? I, I, I don't know about this. So I haven't researched it, but they said that the sun has to be a cert- somewhere in the sky to get it properly. If it's too low or too high or whatever. Well, I think you have. Yeah, you have. Again, I don't want to sound like I uh, know what I'm talking about when it comes to that stuff. But I think you have different like light spectrums, like in the morning, in yeah. the afternoon. So right. Um, that because def- you're not only getting vitamin D from the sun. I mean, it's. Uh, mm. It's uh, yeah. I mean, and again, I'm, <laughs> I'm not even sure if you're getting the vitamin D or the vitamin D is just getting activated in your body. Yeah, from the sunlight, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not an expert on, vitamin on that D stuff. Is just I just know. floating into your body from the sky. I, do, I just know I always feel good after, you know. Being in the sun. A couple of hours in the sun. Yeah. Or just being outside. You know, your mood changes, your... Yeah. Um, you can see it has a direct impact on, on your hormones. Yeah. Uh, and it's big for, you know, it's big for testosterone and things like that, which is... Uh, yeah. It's big for guys. And it's, you know, it's important for women as well. I mean, vit- vitamin D has a lot of process. Uh, does a lot of things in the body as well, doesn't it? You mentioned magnesium does over like three hundred. I think vitamin D is like something similar. Like exactly, it yeah. does a lot. Um, Immune system and all that stuff. Yeah, I, a, a lot of the like I said, a lot of these do kind of, you know, balance together. They, yeah. they they work together in like teams. So yeah, um, it's no good just like focusing on like one supplement and just yeah, you know, taking the load of it and thinking it's going to make you better because then that can have a counter effect yeah. on, on uh, others you know th- things like um you know salt potassium magnesium they, they all kind of um need to be in balance yeah exactly i going off what you said there like it's like when it's night time we've evolved on the, on the earth for millions of years as humans and it's just built into our dna that when the sun goes down we're supposed to be sleeping Right, and then when the sun comes up in the morning, we're supposed to be out walking around, you know, shoes off in the dirt. And I feel like those basic aspects of being human are just not like like it gets dark. We put all the lights on, it messes around with your sleep. You're supposed to be asleep, you know. People feel tired. Their their melatonin starts releasing, and the body's getting ready for sleep. But we fight against it, and mm-hmm. we watch, you know, a program on Netflix for an hour where that hour was really meant biologically for sleeping. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so when you start messing around with all these things, now obviously, you know, it, it would be nice if we could just sleep when it goes dark and wake up without an alarm and and just you know run around in the sand all day with our shoes off. But like life these days is not like that. So it's just I think going back to what you said, like naturally, just trying to incorporate. Like if I'm walking the dog, sometimes 
I'll whip my uh, flip flops off and I'll just put my feet in the on the grass and in mm. the in the sand. Try and walk. I heard recently uh, that walking in the morning is supposed to be really good for anxiety. It slows down the amygdala, amygdala in the brain. Right. The, the um, amygdala. Amygdala. That's the one. <laughs> Um, it slows it down, so it reduces anxiety. So the just the the process of like in the morning, first thing, getting direct sunlight in your eyes and on your skin, and walking forward and having like sounds and things move past you, even for ten fifteen minutes, uh, decreases anxiety. Mm. So yeah, just going back to nature, like you said, and um, yeah, and, and, and you know, just going back to sleep and and uh, waking up and all that stuff. So, the circadian rhythm is a big one for health. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot yeah. of stuff. There's a lot of research going on with that at the moment. There's a lot of um, new stuff coming out. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's important. I mean, especially now with you know with Netflix and your phones and stuff like that. You know, going going to sleep is getting uh, harder and harder because yeah. we're coming home from work slightly hyped up anyway. Yeah, you know, uh, we've got like a lot of artificial lights going on TV. Yeah. Um, you get yeah. a lot of blue light into your eyes, yeah. which is keeping your stress hormones going mm. and going, mm. which you need more of those in the morning, really, because like, mm. when to start the day. But yeah. at nighttime, you need everything to ca- calm down. You need the nervous system to relax um, so your body can start producing melatonin and going to sleep mm. and getting into that deep REM or REM sleep mm. um, to recover properly. Because if we're not, then we're just waking up um, the next day, not not rested. Mm. You know, and that can affect blood sugar levels. You know, if we start craving um, mm. more like sweets or refined carbohydrates, mm. stuff like that. Um, I mean, the list goes on, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely important. Yeah, I, f- I feel like um, just on sleep, like if you get home, just turning down your lights, like don't blast the main lights in the house, like put the lamps on instead. Don't Don't have your TV on, you know, Saying that you're not going to watch TV in the night if it's something that you like to do is not realistic, but turning down the brightness of the TV a bit, mm. wearing your, your blue light blocking uh, glasses. Um, do you uh, wear light blockers? <laughs> <laughs> I've just, uh, it brought me back to, um, do you remember when I sent you that photo a couple of years ago? Because a, a couple of years ago, I was like banging to this, like, all <laughs> yeah, this bio, you had the glasses on. biohacking stuff. And I think I sent you a photo once and I'd like, I'd, <laughs> I have a blue light block. Um, <laughs> I had my eye mask, my blue light blocking glasses, I had earplugs. <laughs> and tape over your mouth. I had tape over my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but just, to, just quickly on t- uh, mouth taping, I've actually got back into that recently. Have you? Um, and uh, it sounds a bit, it sounds crazy, but like if, you, if people are listening or if you're struggling with sleep, try and look into it because um, I was going through a, a stage, I, I don't know if you remember when I was like, I was waking up at like three, four mm. o'clock. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, and I was waking up like wired. Yeah, um, like I just had like ten coffees or something, and um, I looked into it and I, I came across mouth taping because uh, I don't know whether it was like some type of sleep apnea or something. But if you mouth breathe, that can cause um, stress. So you want to be breathing through your nose. Yeah. So um, you could even you know just just now just breathing through your nose, uh, relax. You know. Mm. Um, Brings the nervous system down and will relax you. Yeah. So, like, I think mouth saving just retrains the body to just, uh, as you're sleeping, just to breathe. Right. Through the nose. Yeah. Uh, more di- and you diaphragm get more, breathing. You get more oxygen to the brain doing that way as well. Through your nose. Mm. So, I think what I was doing, I was I was mouth breathing a lot while I was sleeping. And that was, like, waking me up a lot in the middle of the night. Mm. Um, and I just find when I mouth tape, I just sleep uh, a good, solid, you know, uh, I can just tell, you know, you know, when you get that good sleep, yeah, and you just know you had a, you wake up, you feel awesome, decent rest, yeah. Um, that's we're just digressing there a bit, but um, no, that's really yeah, good. Now, yeah, I, something that yeah going back to that photo, <laughs> I yeah. said, and I was like, yeah, you all wired up, yeah. This was this was ages ago, and actually now we were taking the piss out of you then, but I wear um, an eye mask every night. I put earplugs in, um, and I can't get to sleep. If I haven't got those things in now, like it's hard for me to sleep because I'm used to it. Mm. Especially the eye mask. Yeah, like the the ear the earphones, I can deal with a bit of a, like white noise, like the ACs or whatever going on in the background. But yeah, uh, the eye mask, I cannot sleep without an eye mask now. Yeah, I mean, my, 
the place I'm at now, I mean, the curtains are like those, um, the, was it blackout curtains? Yeah, the blacked out ones. Uh, They're double layered. So I'm pretty good for eye masks. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, again, there's other things with that as well, like your phone being on, like EMFs. Yeah. And stuff like that. But again, that's another topic altogether. So you, to avoid any um, electromagnetic whatever fields or, or waves coming off your phone are you supposed to turn it off completely or just put it on uh, airplane mode um, I mean I think it's better just to keep it out of your room right because it, <laughs> well, these things are so addictive like I you know sometimes I'll wake up and I'll just be like I'll just check my phone and be like what am I doing yeah Cause then you're just getting a, a blast of like blue light yeah. in your eyes and it's going to wake you up <laughs> yeah so I mean if you can keep it out of your room that's probably the best. Uh, and they just have a normal alarm clock, like a, a standard. Yeah, I mean clock. the things with EMFs as well. I think it's still, um, again, there's a lot of new stuff coming out about that. Mm. I mean, obviously, EMFs coming from your phone are going to be really low level compared to like yeah. an X-ray machine or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, that's that. You know, if you're interested interested in learning about that stuff. That's that's quite interesting yeah. as well. Yeah, um, I heard you can you can buy my my friend actually gave me this thing that you stick to the back of your phone, which absorbs. Okay, yeah, some yeah. of it. And There's loads of different products. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah, maybe like a phone case or something. Um, you're never gonna. I mean, in this day and age, you're never gonna get away from no no EMFs. way. They're gonna be impossible. You know, yeah. Um, but trying to minimize it. Yeah. I know a lot of people say don't keep your but phone in your pocket. Yeah, it's right, really close to some very important organs. Yeah, who used who used to go on, go on about that? It was Poliquin, wasn't it? Yeah, Poliquin used to. Did he? Don't Paul put Chuck. Yeah, he used to they used to talk about that. Don't quite put a bit. your phone in your pocket. Yeah, you're never going to get away from it completely. Yeah, there's so much. Like I went through a period of not using a microwave <laughs> um, because uh, so many people, like Paul Check, is one of them mm. who goes on bangs on about. Uh, he's, I heard him once say that, like, yeah, when he first saw a microwave, it just his mind just couldn't just innately knew this thing that's blasting my food and making it really hot in, in a few minutes is not good for the food. Mm. Um, but uh, I have got a microwave now and I do microwave my food. Yeah, I think, I mean, like I said, you're not going to fully get away from all yeah. this type of stuff, especially as technology goes, yeah. you know, it goes on and improves. But um, Unless we all move into the It is interesting the to see like, the, the future research that's going on with it i mean mm. how damaging emfs are to yeah. the human body yeah um, i've seen a lot of stuff um they can cause like uh, cell damage and oxidative mm. stress and things like that um well so yeah this is this is where we just circle back now to like supplements yeah you know, exactly you know, uh, antioxidants and yeah um, making sure you've got the basics right and, and all that stuff mm. exactly yeah to, so your body can deal with all these um excess stresses I want to dive into caffeine a little bit because mm. uh, I know that we've both been experimenting recently with on it, off it. Are mm. you still are you taking coffee again now? I'm or? just addicted. <laughs> I'm. Um, I've tried. I've tried. Uh, I've gone through phases of coming off coffee. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I think it takes a. Obviously, you get like withdrawal and stuff, don't you? So, it's. Uh, I've had like. You know, months or two, um, not drinking too much coffee, mm. but then I just it slowly creeps back into my life, and yeah. you know, it's so easy just to, you know, if you fancy something, just just to make a cup yeah. of coffee or like a little pick me up. Um, but I do find like anything, anything past two o'clock, two three o'clock, if I have coffee, yeah, then uh, that's going to affect my sleep for sure. Because mm. I think I'm quite sensitive to caffeine. Yeah, um, it's supposed to have an eight hour half life, right? Around eight hours, mm. is it? Yeah. At the moment, I'm just like one in the morning. One coffee, yeah. Yeah. After breakfast. Right. Just kind of line the stomach first. So I don't think, you know, a, a coffee first thing in the morning is good for the, yeah, good for the stomach. <laughs> Wake up. Um, I've not had caffeine now for like a month. Mm. And I'm feeling really good. But um, you're right, like, I am extremely sensitive to caffeine. So green tea for me is like you know a cup of tea like a normal black tea with milk is like a, a coffee to, to most people um, and it's so easy when you're tired and you haven't slept just to like go in the cupboard see the coffees and the teas there and just be mm. like oh I'll just make one 
but that's how the stock the the cycle starts again and you end up you know the next day having just one and then before you know it you're addicted to it again yeah i mean look you know there is a lot of health benefits to coffee as well i mean it's not just uh yeah uh, i think it's just I abused think, yeah exactly yeah i think you've just got to be you've got to be uh it, use it use it well yeah because uh, it you know like i said it has has a lot of benefits on the liver you know it's um been shown to um improve certain you know different things yeah so um and it makes you feel awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah for the first for the first couple of hours yeah um but yeah i mean if you have it if you have it with food um you know with you know decent amount of protein yeah. fats and, and carbs yeah um then yeah you, 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 i find if you have it on an, an empty stomach then you just get wired straight away mm. and then obviously anything which is too much you're going to come crashing down yeah um but just keep it balanced i i just it wasn't worth it for me like the two or three hours of the high wasn't worth the lows were just got got too much for me where i'd start yawning i'd feel tired yeah. unmotivated <laughs> So, like, I would get a lot done and I'd be really focused for the short couple of hours, but the rest of the day I'm yawning. Uh, so it just wasn't worth it for me anymore, and it was tough coming off it. Like, I was, mm. like, the first few weeks, but now I feel amazing, and it's more like a natural energy. But I did start taking, I told you, the mushrooms. Um, so I take two teaspoons of layered superfood. It's a, it's basically a coffee creamer. It's, it's built to go in your coffee. Right. But I just have that because it tastes really good. There's no dairy in it, and it has functional mushrooms in it. Chaga, uh, cordyceps, reishi, and uh, lion's mane. Yeah. So two teaspoons of that, and then one sc- scoop of uh, pure lion's mane. I think it's quite high, high dose of lion's mane, because that's supposed to be help you focus. Mm. And then um, I just put a stevia sweetener in it, um, and I put a teaspoon of chaga in it as well, powdered chaga mushroom mix that up and that's what i replaced with the caffeine and i don't know if it's placebo or what but when i when i have one of those i do feel focused without the uh the stimulating effect yeah it it does it like i i 100 percent feel it i like like i said i don't know if it's actually doing anything to my brain or or it's supposed to help your brain focus lines main but um yeah I, i felt that really helped me get off caffeine so if you are thinking about getting off caffeine you can replace it with something like that yeah if i was to come off caffeine like coffee completely now i think i'd have to spend like two or three weeks of feeling a little bit groggy yeah you know in the mornings especially um yeah. but yeah i mean once you once you kind of gone through once you kind of wean yourself off it mm. um yeah you're gonna be a lot more sensitive to you know other stuff so it's annoying as well i used to i was a heavy coffee drinker years ago and i remember i went to france on a on a trip and uh, i couldn't figure out why i had this huge headache and i was really tired all the time mm. because i didn't have coffee yeah, um, and at that time I quit it because I didn't want to rely on this thing um, to to feel good. Um, that was probably harder because I was heavy into coffee, like five, six coffees a day. That yeah. coming off of that was really tough, like cold turkey style. It's probably better to like reduce it if you are at that point. I think if you do, you know, if you do love coffee, then you know probably go for more uh, organic quality coffee. Because, mm. mm. like I said, I mean, it, you know, there is a lot of health benefit benefits to coffee. Yeah maybe your polyphenols and, and things like that. But, um, yeah, if, you, if you're going to drink coffee, I'd say just look yeah. for more quality, yeah. good sources. And I think... Not uh, like instant, like, stuff you get. Yeah, yeah, the, instant. <laughs> the shops. Um, minimum effective dose is key as well. Like, at, at a certain point, drinking more coffee is not going to be any beneficial to you. It's not going to make you feel any different. It might actually have a negative effect. So just having the minimum effective dose that you want to uh you know feel good get the benefits uh, and not overdo it all right we haven't got t- too much more time um we pretty much went into a lot of the basics there and uh, i think that was good is there anything else mm. I mean, in terms of supplements or yeah well protein was one thing i did want to touch on very yeah. quickly what's your take i mean i know, i think i know what that is very very short simple answer protein yeah i mean i I try to get most of my protein from animal proteins and I know yeah uh not everyone is going to be like that because you know um if you're vegetarian or even mm. you know strict than that, stricter than that vegan mm. um but yeah I like to get a lot of my proteins from animal proteins yeah um if I'm going through like a 
uh, a heavy training phase, like yeah. lifting a lot of weights and stuff like that, yeah. I'll probably add in uh, a whey protein. Yeah. Um, I mean, I do. Yeah, I do have whey protein quite a lot, but sometimes I'll just, you know, rely on more animal protein. Yeah. Um, and I think if you can hit around, um, I think I good for me. What's I've kind of experimented with is like around 120, 130 grams. That, that's good for me. Yeah. Protein. So. Yeah. You know, that's quite for me. That's quite easy to get from food, fish, chicken. Yeah. Beef, yeah. Um, you yeah. Know, pork as well. I feel like a lot of people do struggle to get uh, protein in. Mm. And that's where a, a supplement can come in. A protein supplement can supplement your diet uh, to get enough. I'm probably on about the same, about 120, 130 grams of protein a day at the moment, which is uh, drastically less than what I used to eat, 200 grams a day. I think as an athlete, you could probably push it a little bit more. You yeah. Know, um, yeah. Yeah. For me, if I was to... I was to start training more then you know you can probably get more a little bit more benefit out of maybe 150 grams yeah uh, but anything over that really is I don't think it's too yeah. too much more beneficial yeah um, e- eating more than 150 grams a day is hard but 150 grams even 150 like if you're not used to eating protein 150 is not that for the everyday person it's not that easy to hit 150 grams of protein so that yeah I would say like probably 30, yeah, 120 it, food because if you're on the go as well I mean you know, it's hard to. Yeah. The, the quick and easy option is usually, you know, something Put with carbohydrates or, or higher fat. Um, yeah. I, um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably do, probably have about five protein shakes a week, probably about five days a week. Mm-hmm. And just get one of the uh, one of the super bads with a vegan. Yeah. And uh, that just helps me stay in that 120 range. Sometimes it is tough to hit your protein. Yeah. I mean, all the macros are important, but you know, protein is. Uh, it's yeah. pretty important. I mean, I know like you see a lot of these uh, like people going on like detoxes and like juice diets and stuff mm-hmm. like that, thinking they're like um, detoxing you know, the body. Detoxing, but you know, without protein, you know, your, yeah. liver, your liver won't be able to detox properly. Mm. Um, so yeah, protein is important. Um, I mean, yeah, like I said, they're all they're all important. But I try to kind of hit my protein. Um, target mm. throughout the day yeah and then kind of my fats and carbs are kind of eat around built around it yeah yeah protein focus on the protein first yeah cool all right i think that's enough to get on with i'm gonna actually gonna go and uh from this podcast try the mouth taping because i haven't tried it before and i'm also going to try and uh research a bit more on the vitamin e so just to cover what i said earlier me and danny are not doctors we are not in any way qualified to tell you what to take, you will consult with your doctor or a qualified nutritionist or dietitian for that. This was just me and Danny having a chat about supplements and I'm sure you guys can get a lot from this. You know, do your own research and look into it. And yeah. All right. Thanks, mate. Awesome. See you guys See you soon. See you guys soon.